Hi, and welcome to the structure, the terms you need to know. These um, terms, again, are the ones that you need to know for structure. Now, in um, hopefully you'll watch this video, then you'll actually watch the structure uh, video on the concept explained, and then the example of how to actually answer with the, um, the following video. These little um, screencasts are meant to help you, so please stop and um, do all the bits and pieces as you need to, pause, rewind, all the bits and pieces take notes, all those sorts of things. Now the thing is with structure, you need to know your structure because it's going to be in just about every, you'll refer to it in every question that you do. So here we go. So an aria, we've got two little angels there because an aria is simply, it is Italian for song. So if you see a question that says, um, it talks about an aria, it is just a fancy word for song. So don't get too afraid of that one. Introduction. So if you're introducing yourself to someone, it's yeah, you're, um, you're telling them that you're new and um, all those bits and pieces. And the same with in, in introduct introduction in music. It's a section of music that precedes the main musical idea. So it's just the beginning of the song before the, the main part starts. And anacrusis also is called an upbeat. It's a group of notes occurring before the first beat of the first bar of music. So if you actually saw the music written, you'd see the very first part is only a couple of little notes, sometimes a few more, and then it's actually um, completed in the very last bar of this, the piece of music. But um, an example of an anacrusis that you would hear would be um, Advanced Australia Fair. Australians or let... And the actual first beat of the bar is on the part of the word... Um, is a is not Oz, but Trailians. Okay, on that Trailians bit, that's the actual first beat of the bar. Oz, that's the anacrusis. Australians, that fast next bit is actually the um the first beat of the bar. So that's an anacrusis or an upbeat. Now strophic. Now the reason I've got a green bottle there and it's broken is because a song that repeats the same melody for it, um, for each verse, no choruses. So, ten green bottles hanging on the wall, ten green bottles hanging on the wall, and if one green bottle should accidentally fall, there'll be nine green bottles hanging on the wall. That's an example of a strophic song. Okay, so a song that repeats the same melody for each verse. Okay, there's lots of ver um, versions of the same, um, this sort of musical idea, but that's what it is. So, three composed. Now, there's a reason Little Queen there, because it's a piece of music with no repeating sections. So, if you think of the song Bohemian Rhapsody, that song progresses and changes as it goes through, and it really doesn't have any sections that um, repeat, and that's what through composed means. Antiphonal. Now, this is another name for call and response, but it's usually only referred to in church music. So, it's usually church music with a leader and then a group um, response so you know um, I said it's like it's just a form of call and response but it's in church music middle eight now I've got that little eight in the middle because it's a section in a song where the soloist improvises usually eight bars long okay so it's often in jazz music or in rock music it's that little bit where the guitar does a solo or a saxophone solo or a keyboard solo some sort of little solo that only goes for eight bars the verse. A verse is a section of a song that has the same melody but different words each time. Okay, so that's what the verse is. Whereas a chorus is a section of the song that has the same words and the same melody each time. There are exceptions to this rule because sometimes there are um, choruses that have slight changes in words but it's still the chorus. Monothematic. Now you can see four little triangles there. They're all the same size but what it means is a piece of music, that should say say of music, not off music, piece of music with one melody that is repeated usually by different instruments. Now there's a very famous piece called um, by the um, composer Ravel called Bolero and it's the same melody repeated by different instruments all the way throughout. Binary. Music with two sections, A, B, or it could be A, A, B, B. There's a rectangle and an oval. That's why. Two sections, A, B. Ternary, on the other hand, is music with three sections. The third is a return to the A, um, or um, to the first section. So the A, B, A. So twinkle, twinkle, little star would be an example of that. 
Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. That is A, up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. The B section and the return to the A. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are, is the return to the A. So that's an example of ternary form, A, B, A. Rondo, on the other hand, is music with a returning theme and a different section in between. So A, B, A, C, A, and it can keep going on, A, D, A, E, etc, etc, depending on how long the piece goes for. But Rondo is usually that um, in about that format, A, B, A, C, A. Song form. The most popular piece of thing that you listen to would be song form. It has an introduction, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, middle eight, chorus, verse, chorus, coda, etc, etc. Okay, that's song form. Coda. If you're pinning the tail on the do donkey, you're actually pinning the coda, which is Italian for tail. It means the ending of the song. Okay, it's usually some sort of little bit of the chorus or um, a repeat of one small section, uh, some way to actually finish and finalise the song, the coda. And that is the end.